Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video I'm going to be doing a skin quest on parabens. Now parabens are a very common preservative that is found in a lot of cosmetics and skincare. And a lot of people are on different sides of if parabens are good for you or bad for you. And so on this video I'm just going to be discussing what parabens are and what they really do for your skin on a molecular level. And then I'm going to let you guys decide, you know, if you consider parabens a good thing or a bad thing that's found in cosmetics and skincare because really from what I discovered it's really just kind of personal preference but let's just get started there are different types of parabens out there in the market right now but all of them are just different versions of parahydroxybenzoids. So I'm just going to be breaking up that word to really explain what each of those um, different roots mean in that word. So I'm actually going to start off with hydroxy because I'm going to hold off para because it'll make sense later. But for the hydroxy part, that just simply means hydroxyl group. And that's a functional group of OH. So that simply just denotes the OH that you see in the molecular level right here. And then um, benzoate is simply just a benzene that's attached to an ester, I believe. And an ester is simply a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to another carbon, and then single bonded to another oxygen that is attached to another series of molecules, which is denoted by R. Now this R is really important because this is really what makes each paraben different from another, and in turn that can also affect its, um, like, its effects on your skin. So the last part is the para. So para is simply just a directing group, and I'm not going to go too in-depth of what a directing group is, but there are three directing groups. There's ortho, meta, and para. And as you can see, they're all a little bit different, but the position of them is dependent on the position in relation to each other. So the substituents in relation to each other. And as you can see, for the paraben structure, the hydroxyl group and the ester are in the para position. Now, as I mentioned before, the R group on that ester is changing for every single different type type of paraben that makes it different from each other. Here's like a chart uh, that I found of some common parabens and how their um, their molecular structure is different. As you can see, that R group is the only thing that's really changing, but otherwise that's, that central structure is the same for all parabens. So parabens have been used since the 1930s as a preservative and most parabens that we see today are actually synthetically made preservatives. So that means that they weren't found in nature. They've been found in, you know, some chemists made it, engineered it basically. So the synthetic parabens that we see today were actually derived from a natural source called parahydroxybenzoic acid. So scientists found that parahydroxybenzoic acid that is found in a lot of plants such as Japanese honeysuckle, vanilla, and coconuts, they found that parahydroxybenzoic acid is the reason why uh, these plants have a natural preservative system so that, you know, bugs won't be attacking it and that it won't grow mold and won't grow bacteria in general. So scientists extracted PHBA, which is parahydroxybenzoic acid, and they kind of modified it and engineered it so that it was stronger so that it can withstand, you know, chemicals and things that we have today that need protection from um, bacteria, mold, fungus, and such. So what exactly do parabens do? So the first thing is they act as a preservative. So the way they act as a preservative isn't really that well known, but one theory is that they disrupt the DNA synthesis of bacteria, microbials, and fungus from developing in your um, whatever it may be, cosmetics, food, anything. But another, this is where it gets all controversial, is that it actually mimics um, effects of estrogen in your body. Parabens actually do um, absorb into your skin. They actually are small enough where they, your body does absorb it. Now, I will say that the amount that a blush or a night cream has um, that will be absorbed into your skin is very, very small, which is most likely not going to be able to make any effects and hormonal changes in your body. But if you think about it over time, if you're placing that same night cream and you're exposing your body to that same paraben for years and years and years, I don't really know if it's going to like accumulate in your body and then higher percentages and higher concentrations of it will be in your blood. I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be flushed out, but that's just one thing to consider. Again, there hasn't been a lot of research that's been going into parabens. A lot of the theories and, you know, articles I've been reading have just been based off papers that were like, oh yes, this is what happens. But then there's another article that comes out saying, oh no, well, we proved that this is false. So. A lot of it is just kind of up and down, up and down when it comes to this, but I do just want to lay down some of the research that I found. And one thing, again, is going back to the estrogen. So as we all know, estrogen is a female hormone that kind of makes females females, you know, females makes females 
woman, you know, it's with our breasts and with our um, vaginas, you know, this is getting very medical, but that's basically what estrogen is. And so estrogen works by binding to its own receptors and those receptors trigger, you know, a bunch of series of actions that, you know, produce the other hormones that make your boobs, that make your vagina, whatever it may be. And so parabens are actually been known to weakly bind to those same receptors that estrogen usually binds to, which means that if they weakly bind, they still have a chance of actually activating those same signals, those same pathways that you know make changes in your body. So one of the things estrogen does is it actually helps to produce breast cells. Now breast cells can be in both the form of normal healthy breast cells and it can also be cancerous breast cells. In turn, parabens have that same, potentially at least, could have the same effect as well. This video is getting a little bit more medical than I would like it to be because I'm not a doctor, I'm not any sort of medical professional to be, you know, stating these claims. I didn't get my PhD and like do these studies either. So this is all based off of my research on the internet. I'm going to be leaving links below to different articles and different websites that I found all this information from. But in my opinion, I don't think that there's any direct correlation between parabens and you know, you getting breast cancer. So last question remains, are parabens good for your skin? That's something that I think you guys are gonna have to, you know, figure out for yourselves. Based off the information I have, based off information you're gonna be finding yourselves on this if you're really that curious about it. Um, I will say, just to highlight some things, it can be absorbed into your skin. And there have been some places that have actually banned the use of parabens in certain products. I believe it's Denmark has restricted propyl and butyl parabens in children's products. So that kind of just said something to me, but I, from what I understand, the US doesn't really have any restrictions on parabens whatsoever. Now the last thing I wanna mention is about parabens in the natural source versus parabens in the synthetic source. The only paraben I'm like completely probably fine with, especially eating wise, would be anything with parahydroxybenzoic acid, just because that is found in natural sources. And I love coconuts, I love vanilla, so of course I'm gonna eat that, and you're probably getting little traces amounts of that. So that's fine with me, because it's found in nature, I'm fine. But it's the ones that are synthetically made in a lab, because those are engineered to be stronger, to be more effective, to you know, make, it's the reason why your foundation lasts like three years on the shelf, and why a coconut will only last in your fridge maybe two weeks. So now let's just get into the fun part where we talk about products that contain parabens in it. I went through my whole stash of makeup and I found a good amount of products that actually have parabens in it. I bet you I probably could have found a lot more, but it was really hard to find um, products with parabens in it because a lot of cosmetics um, and skincare items, they don't actually have the ingredients on the primary packaging. I had to like grab products and then Google like what their ingredients are and like search through them and see what parabens they had in it and if they had any at all. And I've come up with a couple products on a good range of different things. So the first one I wanna to talk to you guys about is the Maybelline Great Lash. And I love this mascara so much. It's a cult favorite. I looked online and it contains methyl paraben. So I don't know about that one. I still love it though. So ugh. it's so hard to do these videos like this because I always find so many bad ingredients in my cosmetics and I'm still just like, but I love it so much. So I'm not really gonna come on here and say, you know, I'm never gonna use this again because it has methylparaben in it, but it is it does make me think twice. Okay, so the next product is NARS eyeshadows. They actually contain methyl, butyl, and propyl paraben, three different parabens. I couldn't even believe it myself because this little um this little palette right here is like, retails for over $50. Lip products are probably the ones that I'm just like a little bit iffy on because of the fact that it can get into your system because you eat it, you eat your lipstick all the time. So the first one is the Rimmel Provocalypse. It actually contains propyl paraben. So I don't really know if I'm gonna be using these again. The one that kills me the most is my Wet n Wild lipsticks. In their formula, they use propyl paraben as well. I love these lipsticks. The thing I do like about these lipsticks is how cheap they are and how good they are. So for the fact that they are really cheap, that means their formula is probably really cheap, which is probably why they use a synthetic preservative, which I understand and it's just hard, but I will probably still use the ones that I have up most likely. Another product that I'm actually kind of shocked by is 
my Physician's Formula Cover Tox 1050 Wrinkle Therapy Face Powder. I don't remember what the claims of this were, but Physician's Formula is known to be the more natural brand at the drugstore, and they're always, they had their organic line. I always used to trust their products because I thought, you know, they are a little bit more expensive at the drugstore, so you're probably paying better quality. But my Physician's Formula, um, Powder actually contains both methyl and propylparaben, which I was shocked by. Um, yeah, but I, I probably will still be using this too. <laughs> um, dang it. So the last product is a skincare product, and I actually won't be using this anymore. I probably will be throwing this out, and this is the Olay Total Effect 7-in-1 Anti-Aging Night Cream. I used to love this um, as a neck cream, as a like a chest cream, and look how much I've gone through. Like I've gone through a lot of this. I should have been like smarter and looked at the ingredients beforehand, but it contains ethyl, methyl, and propyl paraben. Anytime I just see the synthetic methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, whatever paraben, I kind of just go like, oh, dang it. But this one in particular, I won't be using anymore. I'm just kind of bummed out about it. I don't remember how much I paid for it, maybe 20 bucks. So I will be passing on that, especially the fact that I like had it close to like my boobs. Um, but anyways, that's it for my video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the skin quest. Please leave me down any suggestions you have for the next one. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.